Hello Macro Geeks. If this is your first time to my channel and you like what you see, then hit the subscribe button down below and when you hit that button, a little bell will pop up. Hit that bell and you will be notified of any new videos in the future. Alright, so today I want to talk about how you can do macro photography and flower photography with lower priced DSLR equipment. I've been making my living for 15 years doing this and I have never owned any of the expensive pro equipment or even not even the mid-range equipment that most would, people would consider. Bill Fortney, who's a friend of mine, worked for Nikon and I uh, ran into Bill at a photo conference and he asked me, he says, Mike, I, says, I know you're using our D7000 camera. It's a great camera, but how come you're not using the pro bodies? All right. And I said, Bill, I said, 70% of the people in my workshops are using cameras under $1,000. I said, if I use your five, six, seven thousand $7,000 camera bodies, whatever they cost, I said, those people leave my workshop saying, Mike's images look great because he's got a pro body and my images aren't going to look that good because I've got a camera under $1,000. Well, this camera that you see right here, which is the D7000, which I'm still using today, is about eight years old now. It's been discontinued many years ago, okay? When that camera was discontinued, it sold for $896. That was the last price that I saw on it, okay? So I'm far from using a pro and expensive body. Now, my most successful image that I ever shot was done in 2004 with a Fuji S2. Uh, camera body and I was using a 180 Sigma lens at the time now that image uh, which I'll show you right now that image won me uh, second place image of the year on naturephotographers.net in the flora category uh, it won highly honored in the Winland Smith Rice International Competition which if you're not aware of that at that year what it won I uh, drew like 24,000 images from all over the world. And uh, what happens is, is that they, they pick about 120 images and they narrow it down to about 20 and 20 images go to the Smithsonian um, Natural History Museum and hang there for a year. And it's a real big uh, contest. Um, that image has been published in Outdoor Photographer Magazine in three separate issues. And it's also been published in many other magazines. Uh, it's owned by Hewlett Packard. Hewlett Packard owns the rights to that image. It was also one of my better selling images in the art show business when I was in the business for seven years. So it's been my most successful image and that image was shot with a Fuji S2 6 megapixel camera in 2004. Years and years ago in the digital age, okay? So anything that you own today, I don't care if it's the lowest priced DSLR camera, five, six hundred dollars, whatever they're running, uh, you can produce professional quality macro images. Now I'm not going to tell you that this camera right here is going to be a great camera for bird photography or wildlife photography, sports photography. It's not going to shoot high frames per second. It's not going to shoot real high ISO with low noise. So it's, there's certain things that some photographers require and it may not do those things but it does what I need it to do for macro photography so anything you own I don't care what price it is I'll take any DSLR camera at any price range and make professional quality images that I'll get published alright now the lenses that I use I use Tamron lenses now these Tamron lenses are excellent lenses and I have people all the time ask me they go Mike are those Tamron lenses really that good I say have you seen my images and they go, yeah. I says, how are they? They go, they look really good. I says, well, there's your answer. I don't need to tell you they're good. The images will tell you that the lenses are doing a good job. Okay. So the reason why I like Tamron is because they are in the lower price range of all the lenses. When you compare them to like Nikons and Canons and even Sigmas, uh, the Tamron lenses are on the lower price range. Now the people that come to my workshops and follow me, they don't have a lot of money, a lot of them. And they want to be able to do this hobby without spending a fortune. So I always try to use equipment in the lower price ranges to show people that you can get it done with this stuff. So, and not to take away from the Tamron lenses because they're in the low price range, they are excellent lenses. I have many pro friends that make a living using these lenses, these Tamron lenses. So they are very good. 
All right, now the lenses that I use, I only carry two lenses when I go out to shoot. The first one is my Tamron 90 millimeter macro. Uh, excellent, excellent lens. It's been around for years and it's always been noted as one of the sharpest of the macro lenses out there, okay? Uh, and I will say that all the macro lenses are good lenses and they're all very sharp. Uh, but this particular one has always been noted as a really good sharp lens and a lot of photographers actually purchase this for portrait photography. Okay, so that is my macro lens that I use and then uh, I also have the Tamron 18 to 400 zoom lens and so you can zoom it out it's like that to 400 so there's times when I need to reach out farther maybe I'm in botanical gardens and I have to stay on the paths and the subjects out a little distance and I have to reach out uh, I will be able to use this now these new lenses that are coming out from Tamron, they started with an 18 to 270 and they went to 16 to 300, now the 18 to 400. They have what's called macro capabilities. Now they don't do one-to-one -one macro photography, but this one will do about 1.7, to um, I think it is. So basically what I can shoot as far as area-wise is about an inch and a half by two and a half inches. That's how close and how how a small of an area that I can photograph with this lens. So I could do some of my macro photography with this lens. Uh, and if I needed to get into that one-to-one -one range, I had my Tamron 90. So that's basically what I, I use. And um, I, I don't need anything more expensive than this. Okay. And again, my camera is eight years old and I have no need to have to purchase a newer camera. Now, the only thing I would say that if I did upgrade from this camera here I'd probably stay in that D7000 series because they've had them through up to I don't know 78 or 79 now um, and the reason why I would upgrade would only be because I would want an articulating LCD which would make it a little easier if you're shooting down on the ground you can pop up that LCD and, and, and see the uh, image so that would be the only reason up upgrade otherwise I'll keep shooting this D7000 until it dies okay so just want to let you know that if you're one of those that you know has the lower priced equipment that you don't have to uh, uh, think that you can't produce top quality images and so what I always tell people that if you're not getting good quality images with your camera then there's operator error <laughs>